this is a definite possibility i'm not saying that this is being manipulated or something like this this is a possibility that you as a student of economics should understand the entire goal of studying economics is that you are able to rationalize the world hi everyone welcome to today's video so on today's video i'm going to discuss with you three very important economics related things number one thing is that you must have heard that india's gdp is growing at a very fast pace seven seven and a half percent but western countries for example germany uk they are slipping into recession so why is that the case have you heard an explanation around it so i'll give that number two thing you must have heard that inflation in india is somewhat controlled we are not struggling in terms of inflation prices are not escalating that is what the official data tells us but unfortunately in countries like germany uk inflation has become a very very big problem now again why is that the case now third and finally if the gdp is growing so fast inflation problem is not there then why are we still called a developing country why not a developed country and when will we actually be called a developed country when will people have jobs good salary levels and all good good things so that is the precise piece of conversation i'm going to have with you now the type of data analysis i'll be doing on this video it will help you learn a lot of economics lot of finance this is not a politics video please do not watch it from a political lens my only humble request from all of you would be that please put a rational thinking cap on very very few videos will help you uncover the data the way i'm trying to do on this video i am going to present the good side i am going to present the bad side so please absorb this commentary as a student of economics not as a student of politics so that is my humble request with that said let us move on to the video so in order to understand this macroeconomics video you need to know the basics of economics which i will recap in 1 to 2 minutes and you need to precisely understand these four key terms so let me quickly take you through each of these four terms gdp in simple terms means the total value of goods and services that are produced within a boundary of a country now if you are new to economics you don't understand it much so let's work through an example so let's imagine that india only manufacture cars and in the year 2022 it manufactured 100 cars and the price of every car was 1 lakh rupee then what is the total value of goods and services that were produced it was 100 cars multiplied by 1 lakh rupee which is equal to 1 crore as the gdp so this is an easy way of imagining gdp now the thing is that there are multiple ways in which you can measure gdp for example the method that i just described is called as the income method now there is something called as value add or output based method then there is something called as expenditure method so there are multiple ways in which gdp can be calculated now we are not here to become economist we are here to become a better rational absorber of economic data so for the purpose of today's video please understand how gdp is calculated so one way i showed you but second very important point that you need to know about gdp is that gdp is driven by private consumption and public or government consumption for example so if i am going and buying like five cars then i am adding 5 lakhs to our gdp right that becomes a private consumption why because i am not with the government and i am not doing government expenditure i am doing private expenditure on the flip side if the government decides ki we are going to buy 50 cars so how much value are they adding or how much they are increasing the gdp by they are increasing it by 50 lakh rupees so i hope you understood that by bringing up the public spending gdp can also be increased so i hope you got the understanding what gdp means what are the various ways in which it can be calculated and the difference between private and public consumption so now comes concept number 2 which is a very less understood concept which is around recession so recession simply means that there is two quarters of negative gdp again i will say that two quarters one quarter means three month so if there are two consecutive quarters in which the gdp growth rate has become negative it means that that country is then in a recession this is a very important point i'll come back to it now let's move on to inflation i keep on speaking about inflation inflation simply means that let's say that last year apple price was 100 and now it is 120 then what has been the annual inflation it has been 20% so it is the general increase in prices fourth and final point that you need to understand is the fiscal deficit point now what does fiscal deficit means so fiscal deficit means that every government would be having a certain income in the form of taxes wagera wagera and by using those taxes they will collect it and then it will expense things out so income minus expenses is what it means fiscal deficit now why is this point number 1 and point number 4 interrelated well 
now you should be able to answer that question very easily because of the fact that see if gdp has to go up then how can it go up well by running higher fiscal deficits that if the government is actually running year after year fiscal deficit what does it simply means it means that it is borrowing more money and it is propelling this gdp through borrowing right so therefore all these four things work in tandem how exactly now let us understand so let's try to answer question number one that why is it that germany is in a recession right now but india is not in a recession so for this you need to understand a basic concept of baseline growth right so baseline growth means that for example if my son is three years old what will be his average height that he will gain every year maybe his average baseline height increase must be like maybe i don't know two three inches or something like this but what will be my height growth every year right i'm already like 35 so my height will not grow in fact it will shrink with age so what is it that we are speaking about here so we are talking about baseline growth of height so something similar happens in case of economies that there is a baseline growth that western countries or developed countries might have for example germany's baseline growth or baseline gdp growth comes out to be roughly 2 to 3% so usse zyada unki economy grow nahi karti on the flip side when it comes to emerging economies like india in india's case the baseline growth would be somewhere between 4 to 7% let me also show this to you on the chart so this is the data for germany and you will see that back in 2013 their growth rate was like 0.44% then 2.21 1.49 so on and so forth so you will see that it ranges between like 1 to 3% so that is their baseline gdp growth rate why is that the case because the base of germany's economy is already fairly high so therefore their rate of growth of gdp will be low now comes the question that okay why is it that germany's economy slipped into a recession so again go back to the definition of recession what does that mean it means two quarter of negative gdp growth now you tell me that if the baseline of a country or baseline gdp growth of a country is between like 0 to 3% now would it have a higher chance of slipping into negative territory or a country that has a baseline growth of let's say around 7% so you make a call so that is one of the reasons why germany is in a recession and india is not now media definitely will blow things out of proportion i am not to going to take any credit away india has done an amazing job the government has done an amazing job every party is doing wonderful work every politician is doing amazing work so i am not here to comment on that i am here to simply help you absorb economic commentary and and that is what i am trying to teach you so i hope you got at the basic answer that okay why is it that germany is in a recession versus india is not so now comes a related question that okay since the german economy has fallen into recession and it's a major economy in the world would it lead to bad stuff all across the world the short answer is no and that is not going to happen now just because a country is exhibiting that it has gone into recession does not mean that their economy has collapsed so please separate these two things recession does not mean economic collapse I hope you are able to establish this point. Now, let me add one final point here that if the Germany's government had to prevent a recession per se, what is it that they would have to do? Now, this brings us to the concept of fiscal deficit. So, let me show you the fiscal deficit charts of Germany and India. So, let me first take you through that and show you the data and then i will talk about it so this is the last 20 year data so from the year 2000 all the way to 2020 what you will notice is that the german government has at least from the year 2014 has been running positive deficit so what does that mean it simply means that they are earning more compared to what the government is spending and in the year 2020 they had to do a lot of expenses but again here they are trying to move to a system where the government actually does not spend more money than it is earning so in simple terms they don't want to run a fiscal deficit now if they had to avert the recession situation what would have been a simple solution again go back to the initial concepts that i had taught all they had to simply do was that they should have taken more fiscal deficit here and they should have increased it and that would have reflected into their gdp figure and then they would not have hit a recession per se so that is a simple point why did they not do it what could have been the implications of it that becomes a very complicated macro topic to discuss probably i will discuss it some other day but i am just telling you that by moving around the fiscal deficit you can actually prevent a recession so this is first related point now the second related point and for this let me take you to india's fiscal 
fiscal deficit and what you will notice is and this is the data from 2014 right that you can see on your screen india has year on year increased its fiscal deficit it was one of the highest in the year 2020 and even in the year 2021 2022 we have been running fairly high fiscal deficit now why am i saying fairly high fiscal deficit because take a look at this baseline right our fiscal deficit was maybe like around three percent and the situation was improving here but then the fiscal deficit has increased over time this reflects into what this reflects into our gdp growth that is a simple point i'm trying to explain i'm not trying to confuse you i'm not trying to take credit away from political parties politicians ministers nothing of that sort i honestly don't bother about them i'm simply here to teach you economy so now comes the second question that the inflation in india is fairly stable it is on the lower side but germany britain they are facing very very high inflation so why is that the case so okay so let me first show you the figures so here is the germany figure and what you would notice is that germany back even before 2020 because 2020 was an anomaly year so let's consider before that that what was the baseline inflation it was somewhere around two percent and at its peak what did the inflation reach to it reached all the way to almost nine percent so there was almost a 4.5 x or 4.5 times growth in inflation so that's a very important point to be noted. So now comes the related fact and let's do the same analysis for India. So what you would notice is, and I'm taking the data all the way from 2014, 2015 onwards. So you will see that this is India's baseline inflation, so to say, roughly around like maybe hovers between three to 6%, right? Which is the tolerance limit set by RBI also. 2020 came, our inflation did not rise up like massively. It has been hovering in that same range only. And now we are back to this square. So why is it right? I mean, almost every single country in the world is facing like very high inflation, but in India, that hasn't been the case. Now there are multiple reasons for that. Again, I can make another video on this topic altogether. So there were two reasons why the inflation in Germany and UK went very, very high. So the first reason was COVID that there was shrinkage of supply, that the supply was limited, demand was still active. So as a result, the prices went up. Now, what exactly is inflation? Again, go back to the basic that inflation is increase in prices. Now, why do the prices go up? Because the supply is less than the demand. Now, when COVID shock happened, what ended up happening? There was less transportation, shops were closed, manufacturing stopped. So supply went down, but demand did not go down by that same proportion. So as a result, inflation increased, right? Now, this was the COVID shock. The second key reason, which was more specific to Europe, was the Russia-Ukraine crisis. Now, because of Russia-Ukraine war, the supply of energy from Russia to Germany, Britain, all these countries, all these Western European countries that depend on the Russian gas for their energy needs, that got disrupted. And this was a specific reason why there was more inflation in the economy in the Western countries. Now, these were two points, right? Second point I hope is clear to everyone that due to Russia-Ukraine crisis, energy prices went up and that reflected in the electricity bill, vagera, vagera. and as a result, inflation went up in Europe. So that is a good reason and that is something that everyone is telling. But first reason is not something that people are delving into. So just a while back, I told you that what is inflation? So inflation is increase in prices. Now the prices increases because the supply is less compared to demand. But I did not ask a very important question here that prices of what exactly, right? Is it like prices of tail? Is it prices of housing? Is it prices of bread? Is it prices of eggs? What exact prices are we comparing here? And who decides what these prices are, what the constituents of that is? So in India, inflation is measured in the following way. Step number one is that a basket of goods is created. Now who decides what that basket is? Well, the government decides. Number two, a weight is assigned into that basket. For example, right now the CPI basket looks something like this and I'm picking CPI because that is the most reliable form of inflation that needs to be measured. It's one of the most talked about inflation matrix out there. So this is the entire figure and you can take a look at the constituents. Something like housing has been given a rate of 10% or a weight of 10%. Something like food has been given roughly 42% weight in our basket. Is that right? Is that wrong? You need to decide. On the flip side, if you take a look at the German basket of goods and services, 
through which inflation is calculated what you will notice are certain changes for example in germany the weight of housing is given as 40 percent so numbers from india and germany are almost switch so now you need to apply a little bit of logic little bit of brain and ask critical questions question number one is that why is it that housing housing for example if you're living in delhi bangalore hyderabad wherever you are working and if your salary is one lakh rupee are you living in a ten thousand rupee house short answer might be no right i mean you might be spending a lot more on housing so why is it that it is being given only 10 percent weight in india you need to ask that basic question now education is being given a 10 percent weight so how much are you spending on your kids education as a percentage of salary you decide whether that number is correct or not so the data that i am pointing you out to is that it looks a little bit skewed now why is that the case so let me start delving deeper into the specific numbers for india and i will show you two charts one is the food inflation chart and second i will show you the housing chart and then i will help you understand why the basket is being designed in such a way so here is the food inflation in india and there was a tweet also that i did you can take a look at this tweet this talks about the annual inflation for example in january of 2021 the annual inflation was two percent now if you go here in january of 2022 it's five point something percent in january of 2023 it's close to six percent so if you add all these numbers what should have ideally happened is that see if you were buying or if your total grocery bill was coming out to be 100 rupees in 2020 right now in 2023 it should not be more than 115 rupees now you tell me whether this data makes sense or not is this food inflation thing correct or not you will be able to ascertain it yourself you don't need to trust my word please simply go and check your grocery bills check your food inflation bill is this data being correctly measured that is my simple point now some of you might say that okay you are building some kind of conspiracy theories no the ex chief economic advisor of india has said a similar thing i am not talking about dr ogram rajan i am not even bringing his commentary so this is what he has said about official figures of inflation now let me show you the final data point which again takes us back to economics see there is a formula which is called as real gdp and whatever gdp numbers you see those are quoted in real terms now real gdp is equal to nominal gdp minus inflation so if you have to boost your real gdp whatever we read in news and watch on news all you have to do is that bring down the inflation numbers by lowering the inflation numbers you can actually project higher real gdp this is a definite possibility i'm not saying that this is being manipulated or something like this this is a possibility that you as a student of economics should understand the entire goal of studying economics is that you are able to rationalize the world when i am putting questions like that bhai you yourself do the calculation that what was your grocery bill in 2020 what is the grocery bill now please check whether that matches the food inflation data that is being presented to you if the math does not add then it means that there is something wrong so in essence the summary so far is that the gdp numbers that india is not falling into recession but the world is falling into recession that narrative yes it kind of boosts the pride i'll be very happy that if real growth happens in india so the summary statement is that the gdp of every country needs to be judged very independently from each other similarly the way inflation works in a particular country also needs to be judged very differently from each other i showed you the data for germany the way their basket is designed the way our basket is designed so you just can't compare numbers just like that and assume that you know what it has the same standards so now comes the final question that when is it that india will become a developed economy in its truest sense so what are the data points that you should be tracking now media tells you to track something like this so for example they will show you that okay which is the biggest economies in the world you will see here us ki economy is this much billions and china ki this then japan then germany than india so india comes fifth it is not that simple because what is gdp again go back to the basics right gdp is the total value of goods and services that is produced in an economy so you have to consider something like gdp per capita or income per capita those metrics are much better than just looking at the overall size of the gdp you also need to consider that how much of it is financed fiscally so these are some of the basic questions that you should ask so this is one right and a better matrix according to me here would be that india will become a developed 
developed country when our per capita incomes become similar to Germany, Japan, all these developed countries. Then comes the second point that do we have the potential? The answer is 100% yes. One of the biggest boosters for our economy is the demographic dividend. If our workforce is highly educated, then what would that mean? It means that they can earn potentially more. So that is one. If our service sector jobs are higher, then what does that mean? It means that people are going to earn potentially higher amounts. So if that happens that better jobs are available in our economy, it will automatically translate to higher per capita GDP. Now there are other positives in the Indian economy. For example, consider consumer spending. Now India is one of the countries where consumer spending is rising like anything, which is actually a very good data point that if people are consuming more, it actually indicates that there is a lot of appetite for growth in our economy. A lot of external companies, for example, Apple has started like stores in India. A lot of Western companies would want to invest in India. Why? Are they doing some kind of dhanda? The answer is no. They actually want to make money out of India. Why? Because consumer spending is going up, they see benefit. Therefore, they are coming to India. So that will continue to happen. Now, another good point about India is that despite the world inequality going very high, for example, consider Germany. And here you will see that Germany ranks 54th in terms of income inequality, despite it being a very developed country. India on the flip side is ranked 66th. Of course, the ranking is lower, but we are a developing country. Now, as we progress from being a developing to a developed country, hopefully this income inequality can shrink and this is one of the levers that can be pulled in our economy why again go back to the point about demographic dividend that india is a young country if young people work hard they can bring a lot of wealth for their families so the chances of getting rich in india is fairly high so that is a good data point so in summary i will simply leave you with this that india is a growing nation there is a lot of potential in it a lot of good things are happening in india politicians are doing amazing job no doubt about that but sometimes we are believing in over marketing without understanding the actual facts. The entire idea behind this video was for me to introduce you to actual economic concepts so that you can start doing this data analysis on your own. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do share such videos with your friends. It would allow these type of videos to reach out to more people. And as a next step, do watch this specific video which speaks about the taxation structure and are you paying fair amount of taxes living in India. I hope you enjoyed this session and I will see you soon.